loud. And we are good to go. And now it's recording now. All right. So um, what did you guys get stuck on for this for this one? Did you guys get stuck on it or no? Because I did send in a video. So yeah, I, wa hmm? I watched the video that you sent out, the technical exam. Yep. Yeah, I got to the um uh the security group part is where I get a little I forget the um that part I would like to go over. Uh the the uh, security groups. Yep. Uh getting the server and all that connected, uh adding the computer to the domain. I had no issues with that. Um that was easy, right? After after we went over it, it was much easier to do, right? Yeah, so I got that connected. You guys are ready? Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, yeah. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Echo has got a giant echo. What is that? <laughs> help desk calling help desk. Oh, then why does it sound like that? What the heck? Sound like you're in a cave. Dark Vader, huh? Yeah, Dark Vader over here. What the heck? When you Not upload good. these videos to YouTube, they're probably hilarious. <laughs> Hold on. Fix your microphone, man. What the hell was that? <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right. Okay. okay, that sounds better. <laughs> you scared me there for a second. I'm like, what's going on over here? What the heck I is going on? Over here? <laughs> All right. Let me share my screen real quick. Uh, screen one. You guys see my screen? Yep. So well, what is, why am I going, why am I going over PDQ? What the hell is PDQ? What is that? Right. So you have to understand, you have to understand that, that I'm going over this because you guys could like ask me questions as I'm talking. Right. So um, the reason why I'm going over PDQ is because like, if you work in a job environment, you have to know how to deploy software on the computer that people are using, whether they're using a desktop or a laptop, you need to know how to do that, like, silently without bugging them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, I, I like, like, if you could, like, if someone asks you, to, like, like, for example, they ask you, I need you to install Zoom on my computer, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go and jump on their computer and install it? If you have SSCM or if you have Ivanti or if you have PDQ, would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. why, would you, why would you bug them when you have a deploy software <clears throat> application? Right? Right. You wouldn't bug them at all. You could just install it behind the scenes and then the app shows up on their computer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how yeah. you would do it in a real life environment. You don't want to bug the user or the client every single time you have to install something for them. If the computer is online and it shows it's available, it's available, mm -hmm. then you could just go ahead and install it. You don't gotta do anything, you just install it. And then you can let them know that I'm installing the application right now for you. You know, you, you want to let them know as well. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to just install it on the fly. That's very because nice. Why I'm why I'm saying that is because some some companies, um, what happens is some some companies they they install these applications and and it it, it removes and it removes certain like it removes and adds like certain things on the computer. So you imagine a user like trying to work on Excel and you remove Office 365 on their computer while they're working on Excel. You know, you can't do that. You got to let them know. You, know, you got to let them know. You, can't, you cannot do that. That doesn't make any sense. So that's the reason why I, I tell people like you got to let people know what you're doing because they're going to get really frustrated by you if you try to, you know, if you try to, to do something like that. So does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in real life, in a real job environment, you would not... You would not, um, you know, you, you you just won't install it on the fly like that. It doesn't work that way. So you want to, just what you want to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm at, right now I'm doing is I'm trying to add desktop, desktop one to this uh, server. And it's online. Look, it says it's connected. It says online. See? This is desktop one. This is it's right over here. It's checking to see if this is online. This is desktop one over here. I know it says Windows 10 Lab, but it says desktop one. How do you know it's desktop one? You do dot slash. So it's trying to add it. It's, it's adding it to PDQ because we're, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to install software on it, right? So I wanna actually add it here because it's not here. So now it's just checking to see 
it's checking to see if it's here. So this is why this is why we this is this is why we use like SSEM. Um, this is why we use PDQ. This is why we use Ivanti, right? Look, look, it actually found it. Look, this is Windows 10. Yes. Uh, uptime nine minutes ago. Look, look at that. See, gives you all that information. So the, the reason why we do this is because some companies, like if you work for a manager, right, you work for a company, right, mm -hmm. in the real life environment, they want to know, uh, they want to report. They want to report how many computers are online. They want to report to see, uh, to see what applications they have. They want to report to see what updates need to be done on certain computers. They want to report to see if this computer is missing Adobe, if that computer is missing Adobe, if this computer needs Java, if this computer is missing Java, this one needs to be, does that make sense? Mm, yeah. yeah. So you would run like SSEM, you will run Ivanti, you run all these like deployment applications. They do inventory scan as well. Um, there's Alterus as well, which is what I use in the past. Um, you run these applications because a lot of these managers, when you work service desk or help desk, right? The manager is going to be like, I want you to, let, I want you to run a report, and I want you to let me know what's missing from those computers, because that computer might be outdated. So it might need, it might need a newer version of Adobe Flash. It might need, it might need a newer version of Java. You know, maybe a newer version of something, right? So that's the reason why, why we run these reports, because a lot of these companies they, they want to stay up to date, but a lot of these companies they want to avoid, you know, having a security risk. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why you had PDQ inventory. That, that that's that's the purpose of it. So the reason I made you guys install it because it does that. It scans the computers, it checks what hardware they have, it checks if they have any applications, it checks if you need to update anything. You could do all that on PDQ. That's what it does. Hey, it's, Kevin, free. Got... It's, it's free. It's free. So you can do all that. I got a question for you, Kevin. Yep. So whenever you are uh, scanning the computers for what is missing, how do you tell it to check for that certain thing? So, like, I have these tools right now. If you look at my computer, mm -hmm. like I'm, I don't know if you guys see my screen. You guys see my screen, right? I, I hope yeah. you do. So, mm -hmm. so like, if you see my if you see my computer right over here, I'm on the computer right now. It's collecting data from it. And if you go to, it's it's just I'm just clicking on it. So you right click on it, right? You mm -hmm. do a scan. You do scan computers. You you basically you do tools and then you, you could actually, you can actually shut down the computer if you want, if you know that there's a shutdown button right here. So okay. on PDQ or SSCM, all these other apps, you could actually shut down the whole computer. You could actually run CMD commands as well. You could remote into the computer too. It does all that. Mm. It's kind of cool. This is a really cool app. I don't know if you guys ever played around with it. Like, I don't know if you guys got a chance to do it, mm. but it, it, it does all that. Look here, look here, you, you run a report, you hit applications and it tells you what applications are installed in that computer. Oh, okay. You just hit run report. There's nothing. There's nothing on it. It's just Team Viewer and Google. Nothing on it. So I guess you, I, I answered John's question. There's a filter, I guess you can run, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a there's a report button right over here. So you could run a report on applications. You could run a report on hard disk. You could run a report on memory. You could run a report on, on operating systems. So you right there. It's Windows 10. And it just simplified and categorized and everything that you're looking for. Yep. Nice. So yeah. you do all that. It tells you. It tells you. It tells you what it is. It tells you here. You're gonna report again. It tells you. Um, go over hardware devices, and it tells you everything that it has, like hardware devices. You could go in here. You could right click on it. This is desktop one. So go over here. Right click on it. You could do um, share folders, and it tells you what folders are shared or not shared on the. This is a. This is a very powerful tool, by the yeah. way. There's a lot you could do with this. People. 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 People don't have not like people don't downplay PDQ. Like it's a good application and it's free. Like this is not like you have to pay for it. So look at like, like, look, I'll show you. Like if I click the desktop one, right. And I click view computer details. Let's just click on that. Right. Look at that. It tells me about active directory. It tells me all the applications. It tells me the collection. It tells me the CPU. It tells me the deployments I have deployed on this computer. It tells me the disc drive. It has 50 gigs of disc drive. It tells me the display. It tells me the files. It tells me the hardware of the computer. It tells me what local groups are on this computer. It tells me local users. It tells me the memory of it. It tells me like PowerShell. I want to run PowerShell commands. I could do that. It tells me what printers are installed on it, processes that are running, product keys that the computer may have, registry, 
the scans. When's the last time it scanned? Services, share folders, Windows features. So what, like what applications are missing from Windows? Windows Task Scheduler, WMI. See, see all this information you get from it. Yeah, so same, same this way. is what you will do in a real life environment, by the way. So in a real yeah. life environment, you go to a job. Um, is this is is this help desk? No, it's not help desk, by the way. Just letting no. you know. This is higher than help desk. So you're doing something like this. <laughs> it's not, it's not help desk. You're not stressed out all the time because you know, people get stressed out like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. well, why not run a deployment tool on their computer to deploy the application? So you don't bug them. You go mm -hmm. ahead and just install it for them. And instead of you going into their computer, like I have to remote into this computer using Zoho, you know, the application Zoho. Yeah. I got to remote in. I got to install it. I got to elevate my account. I got to do all this crap. Like, why do I got to do all that when I could just go ahead and deploy it using PDQ, right? And this do oh, more than one computer at a time? Yeah, you could do five, you could do six, you could do seven, you could do eight. Yes. Cool. So the packages uh, with the applications on there, will the applications already be inside of the packages or will we have to install them first, then, uh, then do it in the background? Or would they already be right there before we even... You know. so that's a very good question. So in a, in a job environment, if you if you're if you're if you're level two or level three or higher, mm -hmm. you have to create your own packages. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, the whole environment will be empty basically in, inside of the packages. No, so no, no, no. In a, in a job environment, no. In a job environment, they already have their own packages set up already for users and clients. Okay. All you gotta do is just go and pick one and, and install it for someone. Okay, cool. So Oh, that's but you you may have to you may have to make your own your own versions of it because sometimes what happens is Adobe might be outdated. It might be in mm -hmm. Adobe from 2018, so you have to go in and update it. Put 2019. You may yeah. have to update Zoom because Zoom is probably because Zoom always updates, right? So you may have to yeah. go and download a new Zoom and then put it over here. You know, so I'm just teaching you how to install it. I'm not teaching you how to create a package and everything because okay. in a job environment, every company does it differently. So I can't mm -hmm. teach you that because. Every company is like, okay, this is the, how we do it. Yeah. yeah, you know they have their own ways of doing it. I don't mm. want to. I'll teach you this way, and then you go to a job, and it's totally different. It doesn't make any sense for me to teach you how to do that because it's yeah. different everywhere. Everywhere's yeah, because our job, we actually had to go go into their stuff, and you know they watched us install everything. We didn't even use uh, any program to. Yeah, yeah. So in a in a in a job, this is so this is the this is not help desk. This is more than help desk. So yeah, and a and a and a this is service desk. So service desk is higher than help desk. So yeah. in the service desk, you will be sending out installations. You may be installing Net Framework, like Net Framework four point four. You may install runtime Net Framework. You may be installing uh, Windows updates, like using this application. You may be like a bunch of things. So mm -hmm. in a real life environment, you will be doing that in real life. So. The reason why I'm going over this is to make your life a lot easier, but also for you to understand how to deploy applications because yeah. in a, in, it, it's so you can add it on your resume too. Mm -hmm. So you have something you could talk about on your resume. Okay. So Four when you go to, to a job, that. when you go to a job interview, right. And mm -hmm. they ask you, I see, I see you have PDQ on your resume. What does that mean? Oh yeah. I have a, I have a project. You don't say lab. I have a project of me uh, deploying installations and software using PDQ on, on my six desktops at home. You mm -hmm. know, that's how you talk in the, in the, in the job interview. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So you have something to talk about instead of you not having anything on the resume. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Hey, I got one more question for, about the PDQ stuff too. No, 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 no. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, whenever in a, a real world uh, job environment, so you would just get emails or would you get calls for it? So like the ticketing formation, like how would that go about you actually getting the work to do? So you get a, you will get a ticket or an email about it. Either, either one works or a call about okay. it. Three different things. Okay. So the way that works is, and I'll, I'll show you. Let me close out everything. I have a question. If a user is locked out, is it faster to use that tool then than to go into Active Directory and the, the, the purpose of that tool is to show you where they're getting locked out of because oh. that's the purpose of the tool. So when you use that tool, it tells you what's locking them out. So it, like if they, if you unlock their account, right, you unlock their account and they're still getting locked out again and again and again, it could be because their password, their, their old password is probably on, on a mobile device or an iPad or a tablet that happens. Mm. Okay. So in real life that does happen. So what happens is the, the user changes their password, right? And their old password is still lingering on another device that they forgot to change the password on that device. 
and it keeps locking them out over and over again. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's so that does happen in real life. And that happens too with, with computers that they remote into. So like if a user has a computer, right? User has a computer, they remote into that computer. Um, they change their password on, on their laptop. But some companies have their laptop and they have a computer too. They have both a desktop and a laptop, right? So the laptop, they change the password. They forget to change it on their computer. So what happens is the computer has the old password in it and they get locked out over and over again. Mm. So then what you, what you got to do as an IT person, you may have to restart the computer or you may have to update their password on that computer for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that, that's what happens. So that's, that's why we're using that account lockout tool because it tells you what's locking them out. It tells you the original location of what's locking them out. It tells you, like, it literally tells you, like, you're getting locked out of your mobile device. You're getting locked out because of this desktop. You're getting locked out because of this computer. Does that I make sense? That, that saves sense? you so much time. I can see Yeah, that. yeah, because then you're going to be like, okay, so how many devices do you have? Like, you imagine, <laughs> like, you talk to someone, like, okay, I, okay, your password, your, you change your password today, you're getting locked out, right? So mm-hmm. let me know. So how many devices do you have? Oh, I only have a computer. And then you find out they have, like, six tablets, <laughs> you know, like, like, like mm-hmm. that. Like, what the heck, you know? So mm-hmm. in real life, that does happen. In real life, that, that, that happens. Like, they, you, they change your password. They forget to tell you that they have other devices. This happens, this happens a lot in real life. So they, they change their password. They forgot. They forget to tell you that they have a laptop, they have an iPad, they have an mm-hmm. iPhone, and then they have another iPad. And they're like, okay, I, I forgot to tell you I have an iPad. That iPad has my old password and I didn't change it in that one. So that's probably why I'm getting locked out. And I'm like, God damn, why didn't you tell me that? Like first? seven hours later. Yeah, like- exactly. And they're getting <laughs> and they're, and they're calling you, they're getting locked out. You unlock their account and then 30 minutes later, they get locked out again. 30 minutes later, they get locked out again. They keep getting locked out over and over again. So does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that's why you will use a tool like that. So you will use that or you will use, um, if your company has it, your company will use stealth bits. So if you have stealth bits. It tells you when the user gets got locked out. It tells you what, what, what the original client is, what the IP address. It tells you what the, what the actual device is locking them out. It'll say like iPhone 2 or, or the, the name of the device. It'll say like Pam's iPhone or something like that. It tells you what, what, mm. what what's locking them out. Then what you do is, you know, you, you know what you do is in the job, right? In a job environment, if someone needs access to that same folder, you add them to the same security group. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So instead of, instead of you manually adding them to a folder, you add them to the security group and they have access automatically. All they got to do is log off and log back in. Sometimes it takes like, Sometimes they, they either restart their computer or sometimes they have to log off and log back in for it to work. It takes time to replicate. So when you add someone to a group, see on mine, I did it like fast right away. But when you when you work, you gotta keep in mind that you're in a job, right? And a job is not the same in a job. You're using VPN. You know, VPN is slow, by the way. VPN, for it to talk to Active Directory, it takes time. So they may have to restart their computer. They may have to wait 15 minutes. They may have to wait 20 minutes for that folder to actually work that they're trying to log in and connect to that folder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause VPN is not this, it's not the same on VPN. It's slow. It might be slow. You don't know. So in your job environment, it might take some time for it to update across the system. So they may not have access right away to that folder. So they have to wait 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, depending on where you work. So once they wait, they log off and log back in, it should work for them. We have to add them to that security group. Or you add them on the user level. You just add the person themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what you would do. So in a real life environment, that's pretty much what, how you would. That's pretty much how you would do it. You you wanna you wanna you you wanna tell them that this may take time to replicate across the system because it does take time. Sometimes it takes ten minutes. It could take fifteen minutes. Sometimes it works right away. It's because a lot of these companies use VPN because you know we're working from home now. So. A lot of people are using laptops and they're using VPN, so it may not work right away. So you have to give it time to replicate across the domain controller. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just basically, that's what it is. So, you guys, have any questions for me? Yes, yeah, sir. No. You guys found uh, today useful? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Helpful. Another big jump. Another big Another jump. Another skill added. Yeah. All right, so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to um, practice Exchange 365, right? 
And um, I want you guys to use my resume template. You guys know where it is? Uh, it's in one of the... Um... It's in the resume tab, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll send it to you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put like, before I even do that, I'm going to put what, what you should have on your resume for the internship. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So let me, let me work on that and I'll get back to you on that. Okay. But we start applying for jobs. Awesome. All right. Cool. Thank awesome. you. I appreciate you, Kev. All right, guys, you guys Thank have any you, questions Kevin. for me before I let you guys go? Cause I'm going to take a break cause I have a meeting at four. So do you guys want me, you want to ask me anything or you guys, or did you guys uh, like, like find things? Comfortable today? Were you guys okay with it? It wasn't. No, I'm good. Makes it makes does it make more sense now? The security groups, the folders, everything. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, we could have rewatched the videos, but yeah, it definitely makes more sense now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm mean, as, as always. This is recorded, so you go ahead and rewatch it, and you're good to go after that. Cool, man. Okay. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right, guys. I let you. I let you. I let you guys go. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thank you, Kevin. All right, man. All right, fun. All right gentlemen. Take care. And uh, Jonathan, fix your microphone. <laughs> Dark Vader. I am your father. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.